I have never believed in the appointment or quote unquote election of anyone to lead us to restore our independence. We will know our leaders to lead us to independence restoration by their work, their bravery, their courage, and their leadership in the trenches, and not by some election in a conclave or some other smoke-filled room like that. I don't want to be introduced to who will lead me to our independence restoration. I want, I want to know him or her by his work in the struggle, public work in the struggle, over time, nothing else, nothing less. I believe in the ANC model. Barry, so I want to welcome you on the set of uh, voices. Um, very happy to have you here. Um, the, you know, the program Voices is really a program that uh, is there to really gather the voices of liberation, just get a com into a conversation, share it with our people, uh, give as much information to our people as possible so that as they prosecute the struggle in which they, they're in, uh, they, they do it a little more informed. And, and I say informed because I think uh, in the past we've done things like, uh, like uh, we, we've done things in a way that it didn't seem like we're doing that at a conscious level. So the program voice is really to, 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 to let our people start being more deliberate in the things that they do. And uh, we're very happy to have you here because uh, you're someone who is deep in the struggle. And, um, and we think that, at, especially at this time, you have something to share with, with our people. It's a, it's, a, it's a very critical time because I personally believe that we had a lot of opportunities in the past to free ourselves and we didn't. And it seems to me that we really need to start being more serious and being more deliberate and being more critical in our thinking as we, as we, as we try to get ourselves, hopefully for the last time, where we are now. And I know that you're someone who I've been watching you over the years. I watched you on the ground, uh, but but I have to start by asking you. You know, well, let me say thank you for this um, singular opportunity. Uh, yes, yes. Because it's 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 also an opportunity for me to um, celebrate through my own contribution, uh, a long-awaited formidable tool of this revolution, the um, Southern Cameroon's Broadcasting Corporation Television. Um, it is also critical that uh, we recognize that we have been engaging amongst ourselves and outside the Southern Cameroon circles in a difficult conversation. And a difficult conversation becomes much easier when the participants in the conversation are informed. And this is one area in which we have been lacking, which has led to a lot of um, missing links that leads to, you know, leakages in the steam that fuels the uh, revolution. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and I was, you know, when I have you on the set, I have so many things to talk about with you. I didn't even give you a chance to make the statement. You just made. I thank you for seizing that opportunity. You're welcome. Um, but here, here's what here's what I was rushing to. Right. Because, you know, uh, I watched a lot of, um, of of the of the debates that were going home that led to this particular revolution, and you were very active, very active, and then. 
you haven't it doesn't seem to me that you've been on the main stage since you you left home what what's been going on well you see uh i'm somebody who likes to keep the house together mm -hmm. and at this point in time i realized that my disposition to keep the house together has fast become i mean been becoming uh, a very very expensive exercise towards uh, the struggle why do i say this at home indeed i was very 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 uh, active in the center stage um, from may 9th 2015 mm -hmm. when i mooted the idea before that date that we should have an inaugural conference of the common law lawyers in cameroon which was an entry point mm -hmm. into a strategic breaking of the glass ceiling of voicing out you know against our captivity by the Republic of Cameroon and its uh, cohorts and her cohorts. Who are the cohorts? Of course, uh, you, you, you have uh, uh, the complicity which dates back to the League of Nations through the United Nations, the conspiracy of United Kingdom and France, who crafted a foundation for the conspiracy that led to a compromise of our direct access to independence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they use the republic of cameroon as a shield that is a territory under the tutelage of france that never enjoyed self-government as we did mm -hmm. but they had independence before us the only explanation is because Cameroon was being prepared for purposes of masking France and British conspiracy to compromise our direct access to independence. That said, I want to say that God Almighty has been on the side of Southern Cameroon mm -hmm. because after all the manipulations at the trusteeship council when the vote of southern cameroonians primarily for access to independence mm -hmm. even though screwed to the two alternatives god blessed us to make a better choice between nigeria and cameroon because if we had voted to join Nigeria, we would have been swallowed completely into the Nigerian Federation. But when we made the choice, because of the specificity of the conditionalities upon which we're going to join the Republic of Cameroon, that is to have a two-state federation of equal status and then to share at federal level just a few areas like foreign uh, uh, diplomacy, uh, armed forces, you know, just a few of them. The rest of them were going to maintain a much higher degree of self-government mm -hmm. that in fact would translate to a confederation rather than a federation mm -hmm. between the two countries. The further blessing that we had when the results of the plebiscite were taken to the United Nations Trusteeship Council for a vote to validate the results of the uh, uh, plebiscite mm -hmm. was that hastily France led the Republic of Cameroon and every other French speaking country ex that was already independent in both West Africa and Central Africa, except mm -hmm. Mali that resisted to vote against resolution 1608. The vote tallies are there mm -hmm. on the records of the United Nations. And on that score, 
the two things which we stood for at the plebiscy. Number one, that we want to be independent. Mm -hmm. The idea of joining the Republic of Cameroon was a conditionality we could not move away from. Yeah, it was didn't. imposed upon us. We didn't have a choice. Yes. We didn't have a choice there. But as God would have it, the Republic of Cameroon rejected us. So we were kind of drilled and conditioned to move in a canal into the death of our independence. Thank God, the Republic of Cameroon put a barricade by not voting in favor of our accession to independence. But the majority vote gave us our independence. Yes. That said, on a second thought, I'm sure Britain advised uh, France subsequently that why, why did you get your people to vote against this resolution 1608? Well, well Baris, I think they, they, they did not want to vote because they, were, they wanted to claim us as part of their territory. Don't forget that Ahijo did, Ahijo did, uh, Ahijo went to the International to, Court of Justice. To, yeah, to, to claim Northern Cameroon, obviously lost there. Oh no, let me clarify this. Okay. This is what happens. Ahijo, propelled by France, mm -hmm. began to operate on the theory of German Cameroon. But the defeat of Germany in the First World War and consistent defeat of Germany in the uh, Second World War liquidated everything German yes. in Africa. Yes, and the French were part of chopping it up and dividing pieces. They took part in dividing what was emerging as German colonies. Mm -hmm. And even if we were to go by that theory, a good chunk of chart Central African Republic, Congo, parts of Gabon and Equatorial Guinea mainland were part of German Cameroon. The maps are there, floating on the internet. So why is it that Ahijo has never brought any action to claim those parts of, those parts of former German Cameroon, which are already French-speaking? Yes. They <laughs> are interested in southern cameroon that had already developed over several years its identity and socio-political culture distinct and different from that of the republic of cameroon yes it is our resources under the soil yeah okay nothing more okay. nothing less right um and i'll be happy for us to go I, I really do not want to go into the history but i'm glad you brought that up because um well it's always good for a background yeah absolutely. for people to understand the present in order to construct the future it is absolutely necessary to go back into the past and know where we are coming from absolutely but i think but i think something you said that that's really interesting is that in the in the plebiscite we were given limited choices and the choice that we selected was the, was was it was a was a better choice i remember and full well that while the negotiations were going on in the united nations and in the london conference Bobby Joa sent a telegram to Foncha that you must insist on the third option. Uh, the one for independence. The one for independence, yeah. outright independence. Yeah. And of course, at that time we hadn't diagnosed Foncha sufficiently to know that because of his roots, he was only going to make pretentious acceptance of so, such propositions by Joa. Yeah, it was not only his roots, but also his sponsorship. Don't forget that. I agree with that because yeah. the first uh, Catholic mission station in the grass field, mm -hmm. which was in Chang, was in French-speaking Cameroon, and that is where Foncha's parents were taken and sent to Bamenda. So he never forgot his roots, and the Catholic church sponsored him all along if you see the double standards which the catholic church is maintaining over the killing of the bishop of bafia 
where they are not taking a firm position when they already know that that bishop was assassinated. That is the same thing that happened with the fate of Southern Cameroon when they decided when Lebaga, a son of Fokum, created the party and the church called him and said, leave it to your friend to be the leader. Mm. When he gets into high office, he will take care of you. And that's precisely what happened. Well, that, that's new information. I've never heard of that. Oh, you need to, you need to, you see, there is the unwritten history of Southern Cameroon politics and there's a written history of Southern Cameroon politics. Mm -hmm. And a good lot of the written history, if I may borrow from Donald Trump, is fake history. Uh, but I think that part of what we've been doing, especially on voices, is, and that's and that's why whenever we have an opportunity to go back into the history, we we don't we don't we don't hold back. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, but but what I started saying is that our people in 1960 in, in 1961 during the plebiscite, they made the wrong they made the right choice in voting for federation. I think it's like a public that has made uh, that has made a lot of mistakes. And it's giving us an opportunity to, to go back and be the independent nation that we were really created to be. And we'll be the, the, the light down there. Uh, well, before you go ahead, mm -hmm. please. We voted for federation on the basis of the eight points that elude my recollection instantly. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. What you have to understand is that they voted for the Federation because they were screwed up to that choice. Yeah, for their ind from the independence. And the modalities of the Federation were supposed to be worked out in a constitutional conference. That is why Fumban was programmed. Yeah, but here's what I'm saying though. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that we took this route it was a better choice for us because we at least maintain a certain degree of our, our identity and our, 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 and our sovereignty agreed but la republic screwed it up and so now we are actually going to have our independence whether they like it or not yeah now now well, well um there is there are there are a number of theories about our independence and i i, I like at this initial stage of our conversation yes. to make sure that i clarify certain things okay there has never been a federation. That's why I went to Fumban issue. Right. And if you read from late Honorable Mbile's book, his recollections about our political evolution, the Fumban conference was never conclusive. And it was agreed that it had to be suspended. And when once it was suspended, it meant that we had to come back to it. But even prior to that conference, Ahijo had already modified the Gullis independence constitution of the Republic of Cameroon to include our territory before an agreement by our side to join them. Yes. That is par excellence a constitutional theft of territory. And it even went further because this was being done as a negotiation between that individual and France. Mm -hmm. He went subsequently to apologize to the Republic of Cameroon Parliament that you don't need to worry. What we are doing with Southern Cameroon is not like bringing them as a different entity. We are simply recovering a previously lost territory. That statement contradicted every other thing that he had said during the negotiations in the run-up to independence yes and what sealed it and you know is the eye opener about the role of united kingdom mm -hmm. is that on the 30th of september 1961 which was the eve of the date fixed for the independence of southern cameroon the first of october in a ceremony apparently casual mm -hmm. where the british administrators and soldiers were being seen uh, 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 sent off at Tico Airport. The representative of the Queen and the government of England, in the person of the then ambassador to newly independent Republic of Cameroon, came to that ceremony at Tico Airport, accompanied by the President of the Republic of Cameroon, where he was 
uh, ambassador, ostensibly, the neighboring territory, if we had acceded to independence, for purposes of economy, that ambassador might have been ambassador for Republic of Cameroon and ambassador for independent Southern Cameroon. Mm -hmm. So it was okay for him to come there. And since it was the United Kingdom forces and administrators that were living in some sort of ending of the trusteeship, what he did there, which was criminal, was that he came and made his farewell speech, which incorporated the fact that Britain had hands off. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the sovereignty of Southern Cameroon was no longer in their hands. But to whom did he give a note of transfer of that sovereignty? To Ahijo. Was Ahijo, at that material time, the head of state? or the Prime Minister and Head of Government of Southern Cameroon, the answer is a big no. So Britain traded off Southern Cameroon to France, represented by the Republic of Cameroon. And, and I may add that when he did that, he was, he was actually putting the Southern Cameroon into another colonization because the French, through their cooperation agreements, had not really given true independence to La Republic of Cameroon. And that's why we are talking of France when we talk about La Republic. May I make some precision about the cooperation agreement? Yes, please. There are several cooperation agreements. Like, France has a cooperation agreement on administration of justice with Cameroon, which is a lot more recent. But the original cooperation d'accord, mm -hmm. because in its original form, and I believe if it has been translated into English, it has not been officially translated, mm -hmm. was a conditional undertaking by Cameroon to accept a nomenclature of an independent country which did not have the content requisite for any country that says it is independent. It was simply dressed up like the proverbial snake who borrowed suits, shoes, and dressed up to go woo a woman. And after the wedding party, the people who had the clothes came and collected it, and the, 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 the bride found herself with a snake. This Republic of Cameroon, under the cooperation agreement, from that date of their own independence, 1st of January 1960, mm -hmm. to date, has been less independent than the Republic of Cameroon, I mean, than, than Southern Cameroon, from when we had self-government up to now that we have been colonized because our thoughts, our actions, with bare hands, using only our mind to, our set, to assert our independence, is the force of the spirit of a content full independence as opposed to a puppet independence of La Republic du Cameroon. Yes. Yes. And we have been fighting ever since and we won't stop fighting until we get our independence. Absolutely. Now, my first question to you was as I, that you, ha you laid the groundwork. In fact, you and the lawyers started this revolution on the ground. But somehow, you, and as I've already said, and the lawyers are not main players right now. And to be honest with you, I have a problem with that, which I would express more as we, as we continue with this conversation. Yes. Let, 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 me, let me say something about that. Uh, the Southern Cameroon's defiance of its recolonization by the Republic of Cameroon dates back real far. Mm -hmm. There are many, many organizations that came up because of the, 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 the corrosiveness of the oppression of Ahijo. Yes. It never really blossomed until 1996 when we had the AAC-1 in Boya. Mm -hmm. And because of what 
is still reverberating till today. People elbowing and in order to position themselves. We find ourselves where we have never taken the full benefit of the concrete decision in AAC, which became AAC 1 in Boya. We moved to Bamenda, where despite the fact that the police attacked the conference in Mondial Hotel, mm. Dr. Munzu still succeeded in reading the Bamenda proclamation, which was to the effect that we are no longer negotiating for federation, but we are going to assert ourselves for the zero option, which is absolute independence. Okay. Now, I would say that it would not be very correct to say it is the lawyers who started this revolution. Many people have been working. But the thing had gone moribund yes, over yes. a number of years. And that's what I'm talking about. And there has been a recrystallization of the glass ceiling over the struggle. And in Bamenda, at the Tatmulung Multipurpose Hall of the Presbyterian Church, we got so concerned about the incursion on the common law legal culture. Mm -hmm. And it was my opinion, which I mooted, that we need to stem this. We cannot just be picking the idea of they should not put notaries here. They should not do this. We need to hold a conference to review the whole thing. The whole thing. Yes. We agreed on it and set up a team of volunteers who moved straight to Kumba within the next week following that meeting. We went to Kumba and the way they embraced us really took us off ground. We, then we realized that people were thirsty for something. We moved over to Fako. Coincidentally, we met with the Fako lawyers during the election of their president, who then was, I mean, the person who was eventually elected was Barrister Felix Nkongo Agobala. Mm -hmm. And in fact, up to date, I still have a lot of stops from people who said I made a speech that swayed that election what was because the I insisted that we are now on a trajectory of restoring Southern Cameroons, I mean uh, uh, the common law, which is what we knew in the Southern Cameroons. Mm -hmm. And that kind of played badly against candidates who were not I'm reluctant to say it, but, you know, it's kind of, we're now looking for blue blood, Southern Cameroonians. Mm -hmm. how, how, do you how do you define blue blood? You know, it, it's all about allegiance. Okay. Who is that person who cannot betray the mother and the father? Where the mother and the father comes from? No, the son of the mother and the father. And we were building on past experiences mm -hmm. like we had had a parliamentarian who was born and bred in tico uh honorable beto who was popularly elected to go and represent the constituency in parliament and the moment he got there he turned his back and went out to look for where his parents came from and identified with them basalan that kind of gave us heads up that we need to be cautious because the Ngumba of every village never admits members who are not blue blood of that village mm -hmm. and in the revolution it is the Ngumba that leads so this was what we're trying to put together but that said I want to say that there are people whose parentage are linked to the group that had projected itself as 11 province mm -hmm. who are indeed <coughs> very 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 reliable and they pay on alloyed allegiance and with all what has been said there is still 
a <coughs> room for accommodation of such people. That is why when you went for your American citizenship, they asked you to take an oath of allegiance to the United States. And given that the United States admits of dual nationality, they expect you to have allegiance, for example, to Southern Cameroon if, when Southern Cameroon is fully restored. <coughs> but they don't expect you to betray the United States. That said, we all agreed the momentum had been gathered from Kumba. We all agreed and then now moved to Bamenda. We fixed a date, the 9th of let me, May. Let me just so, so that speech that you made influence the the election of bala as the president of fako it did because okay. the candidate who lost accused me that i came there and campaigned against him he was not blue blood if i want to use your word kind of yeah okay all right but you know let me say this okay and i know you you talked about this this uh this mp from from tico you know there's some who have argued that if foncha was a blue blood to use your word again i think that's a good word i use it i've used it in the past if Foncha was a blue blood southern cameroonians he would not have stood there with with the sovereignty of his country passed on to to the french and we knew what was going there because during the campaign in daily had already in fact he would not have even campaigned for us to, i have an interview where i asked him why knowing what was going on in la republic would you be asking us to go join them you know what his answer was? Mm -hmm. He said, well, that was what was going on since, since the German times. And obviously, I've listened to Professor Anyang, we said that our people were never thinking of uh, German times when we were Southern Cameroons. We're not even thinking of La Republic. So, so blue blood Southern Cameroons were In fact, the only thought about the Germans was their brutality. Yes. Yeah. So that there was all material for rejection of the Germans. Yes. Even if they were not defeated by, uh, by the Allied powers. Yes. Well, let me say something. Uh, one thing we must be very... We, we, we must take note of is that on that occasion, on the 30th of September, Foncha never raised any objection to the sovereignty being handed to Ahijo. No, he didn't. Until he died. <laughs> He never raised any objection that he, uh, Britain or United Kingdom handed our sovereignty to. He has never put it in any of his arguments. Third party, because because really what happened was that the the responsibility of Britain was to give us independence or self government, yeah. and none of those took place on that date. Yeah. And another another objection that I, that Foncha did not object was when immediately after Fumban. Uh, Ahijo made all the deals in Southern Cameroon federal employees controlled by Ngo. And instead of, and Ahijo at some point Foncha protested. And when I read this book, it says that Foncha did not protest that the government of Southern Cameroon has been taken over by La Republic. He instead protested that uh, he was not getting the, the security reports. And so Ahijo told Ngo to send, continue to send him the reports and copy. Foncha, no, and, yes. and Foncha was happy with that. So the government of Southern Cameroon was taken without his protest. So he, he was not really representing the interests of the people of Southern Cameroon in every step where he needed to make a decision to protect Look, and, and another unveiling fact is this. Ahijo re-Christianed Southern Cameroon without any constitutional basis, West Cameroon. And this is very important because a lot of people still make the mistake when they are talking in the in this our struggle, they are referring to West Cameroon. West Cameroon <clears throat> was the naming of the slave territory. Yes, that's the creation of La Republic of Cameroon. Yes, it, we go we in our constitutional history we have nothing with that. Yes, what's West Cameroon? Are they talking about West? Uh, 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 what is now? Western pro region and uh, littoral, because that's that's supposed to be the west of the Republic of Cameroon. Yes, yes. So, so people who are advancing that are not really advancing an argument that that is legitimate in our territory. No, no, no. Some of them are young. You know, most of these guys who were born, you know, in the mid sixties, and because the history that our children have been fed with, 
unlike people like us who were born before even the independent projected independence day i was born in 1958 we just didn't have any business with the republic of cameroon and we already had internal self-government yes so what we are saying here is that it is important for our people to be educated about the truth of our constitutional history yes because when you say that where is the act of union some people just don't understand what you are talking about yes but proof of it is that the manipulations of the republic of cameroon especially of our own people who were bought over like the Egwetabis, the Munas, and so on, given comfort that they did not have in Southern Cameroon. What has happened is that they were recruited as second-class members of the Cameroon establishment, mm -hmm. and they still fared better than the ordinary Southern Cameroonian mm -hmm. because not only they but their children were being given the crumbs from the french imperial table in a 2d you know i'm smiling because i can think of some who are arguing federal who are arguing for federalism now who are still who had who had some of the benefits then and are still even though those benefits are gone now but they're still remembering those days and they want to remain in that in that in that favoritism status it's not gone because on the instructions of france even where those who were recruited into the cameroon establishment are dead they still continue to recycle their children yes that's what into government. Saying, yeah on and the relatives that they brought in oh yes but barista let's we're going to move faster i really this this history is fascinating and the reason why i want us to move move faster and the reason why i want you to answer a particular question yeah. is because down the road you know i will build on the, the answer you give me oh that's fine you have been you have been missing in our struggle after what took place in the yeah. territory and then Fortunately for us, or fortunately for some other people who saw you as their leader or the champion of a particular truth or cause, they don't see you anymore. So, uh, so I want you to, to give us some, some, what have you been doing since you arrived in the United States? Let me put it in a different way. Okay. Um, as I landed in the United States, the... Our people in the United States, in various uh, cities and states, mm -hmm. in recognition of what they had followed as my activism mm -hmm. back in the territory, they celebrated the fact that I cheated death by escaping to come. But they immediately sought to quench the, their thirst of what this new face of our revolution was all about by act, I mean listening to the frontliner I didn't ask to go anywhere but I saw myself being flown to Houston Dallas Phoenix Atlanta Minnesota Denver it's all on record and the people wanted to know how did you do it because we had lost hope now that you have how, left, how did you ignite the struggle how did, yeah how did yes. you ignite the struggle yeah. yes and of course i gave them the report that with courage and selflessness even if i conceived some of the ideas i shared and mobilized the lawyers because i knew that that was my strongest platform mm -hmm. I had been practicing for 28 years in Cameroon. So at least I knew that niche. 
and I knew the level of their anger. So I transformed that anger into the steam to propel the cracking of a slit through which bigger issues could be discussed. Mm -hmm. That is why in my keynote presentation, I concluded by saying, even if government were to grant the lawyers all their demands, as they are pretending now to, 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 to set projects in place to, to respond to, which they never wanted. What, but why do you say pretend though? They are pretending. Oh, There's nothing concrete. I'll come to that. Okay. I said, so long as there is no solid constitutional foundation to give security and sustainability to whatever will be granted to us in satisfaction of our demands, those things will be ephemera. What did I mean by that? I propagated the idea that there has never been a constitutional foundation in the form of an act of union bringing Southern Cameroon into La Republic to Cameroon to give La Republic to Cameroon the leverage yes. to compromise our legal system. Yes. And I knew straight away that the moment they address the issue of absence of act of union, it's going to, it was going to open the Pandora's box of every other area. Take, for example, Cameroon Bank that was able to finance projects, mm -hmm. even from, for, for, for businessmen in the La Republic of Cameroon, that France would not, I mean, French banks would not give, was liquidated unjustly. After several years, a banker trained in America here came up with Amity Bank and mobilized Southern Cameroonians to create that bank. Yes. That seemed to be the ghost of a Southern Cameroon bank coming back. They sponsored people from the Republic of Cameroon and, you know, hungry hawks from Southern Cameroon to frustrate that bank. It is my pride, even though my fees have not been settled till today, that I participated in representing Mr. Tasha before the Regional Court of Justice of Semak and one part of the case to say that the liquidation of that bank was not correct. To show you that everything that was done because that bank had a Southern Cameroon identity was not targeting the bank but targeting Southern Cameroon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That judgment of the court of justice of semak till today has never been implemented we've done everything imaginable and the government minister of just ministry of justice has just snubbed the, the 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 judgment when i say this i'm emphasizing the fact that when i mobilize my colleagues for us to use the aspect of law because what aspect of life does not involve law there's none because now through <clears throat> law we will question what was the justification for the liquidation of power camp what was the justification for the liquidation of the west cameroon marketing board and taking its reserves to go and build a headquarters in douala before liquidating it. There is so much theft that has taken place. I don't bother about it because the records will be resurrected and reparation will be paid. It's permitted in international law. Now, when we brought that issue, there was a, while the lawyers just started as the lawyer just started moving and the public in southern cameroon saw that oh god these people have restored our 
they have they have taken the the, the, the struggle of restoring our legal system we are not going to wait for them to complete that journey before we join them businessmen joined the informal sector buy and sell them okada riders taxi drivers truck drivers they all joined and the blessing is that the government of the republic of cameroon got up one morning and smelled coffee the entire southern cameroon had been infected by the pop the, the, the popular virus of we want our independence no more federation and they devised the means okay let's clamper on their leadership terrorize them the way the french terrorized the bamlikis and the basas and drove them into southern cameroon when they did that before even they arrested Agobala, they had started using their batons, can, water cannons, beating lawyers, undressing them in public, breaking into their offices, and killing so many people who came out to support us. That was a statement. You don't follow those lawyers because you follow them, we'll kill you. Yeah, this one you get. At that point in time, because I knew where I was coming from, about 10 years before that, the French, through the French embassy, who knew the level of my involvement with Capo and SCNC, they approached me that they wanted to know what was the impression of Southern Cameroonians in their struggle with the Republic of Cameroon as far as the role of France is concerned. Of course, I didn't go there alone. I went there with one of the leaders of SCAPO. No, I don't understand the question. What, what were they asking for? They were trying to find out what was the image of France amongst Southern Cameroonians in this, our struggle okay. that was being led by SCNC and SCAPO. Okay. We told them point blank that the Republic of Cameroon would not have had this team to stand up against us if they were not supported by you. And the people when they produce their, uh, because they, they hired the deputy director of the Institute of <coughs> International Relations in Yaoundé to do that as a consultancy, he came with a team. What year was this? I can't get exactly the year, but it's more than 10 years back. Okay. And when these people came, and we gave them those answers, and they arranged it carefully, they realized that they had softened Boya. Bamenda was a little too strong. So while they closed the French Cultural Center in Boya, they opened a French Cultural Center in Bamenda after succeeding in getting Britain to close the British Council in Bamenda. You can see the continuity of the French-British conspiracy. The meeting was hosted by the uh, French Cultural Center in Bamenda, Alliance franco uh, Cameroonese. When we gave them those, our answers, you know their reaction after they submitted their report? The French embassy quickly gave a grant for the construction of the food market. Oh, food market in Bermuda? Yes. Okay. It was sponsored by the French? Yes. Okay. You know, the, the typical French style of bribing people. Don't listen to those noisemakers from Scapo and SCNC. We are building a market for you. And they also built, I think it was supposed to be in Quen Market, but the funds were diverted to Mancon, and a huge market which is not well occupied. It's, it was built in Mancon. No, that was Bafood Market, in fact. Okay. It was Bafood Market that was supposed to be built with those funds, but they instead built it in my aid Mancon. Mm. Okay. Because the government delegate, you know, was from Mancon. Yes. 
And now, the, and the founder of Mancon is a CPDM stalwart, I think. Uh, yeah, well, whatever. But uh, this was something that was dealt with the council. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. But you know, what what I'm saying here is that whichever way you do it, when you just pull the veil, you see France showing up. Yes. Which means that Britain really did not give us independence. They gave us to another colonial master. They handed us over. Yes. They traded us over yes. to France. Because there are many theories. One of them is that part of Togo was traded off to the British. They sliced it off and added it to Ghana. Because the original German Togoland mm -hmm. is larger than the present Togoland. Yes, yes. So the French. I are think okay. the old maps do show that. Yes, the French are okay. You can slice that one off, and then. So was it a trade-off? You think? Kind of. Okay. It, it, it's so symmetrical. We we'll take it. We'll give you that one. And it is. But, but this land is occupied by human beings. It's, they're not cows. It's not a ranch. So how did they think they'll get away with that? No, 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 no. The, the whole, the whole concept of colonialism, which is even cruder these days in neo-colonialism, is that they don't treat us as humans. They don't treat us as humans. Because if they were treating us as humans with all the atrocities that have taken place recently, in the United Nations, these Caucasians are talking with two sides of their mouths up to this time. Something is not right. You see, they, 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 we, even animals have rights, isn't it? Yes, yes. At least in the they, West, that I know. They just treat us as land. Okay. They just treat us as land. And on that account uh, people need to be careful that the success of this struggle depends on our being together not by not by the dictate of one group or the other but by consensus Consensus is different from a majority agreement. Number two, we don't need to allow everybody just go his way. We must have a strategic plan for the struggle. Mm -hmm. There are several strategies that various groups and individuals have put in place. But all this must be synchronized to a comprehensive focus principle strategy and within that strategy spread over a timeline with different projects at every milestone we should be able to identify amongst ourselves who has the capacity to deliver on this project we assign it there thirdly leadership should not be arrived at like a joke Leadership should be anchored on a solid foundation of legitimacy. And then our goal must have a legal and legitimate basis. We have this question of choices. If you do a, a pool now, I can say 80%, that's being very conservative, mm -hmm. are for outright independence. There's some 10% that for convenience are talking of federalism. And there's a 10% a, a, a that is hanging on the fence waiting for where it would ripen soon so that they fall into it. Okay. Um, you know, you... you when you talk about leadership and some of the strategies you talk about now, that's something I wanted to come to later. Okay. Uh, but we, let me. We can always do that. Yes, I haven't. Well, I'm, I'm trying to get one question that I told you. Let me ask you th this mm -hmm. question. Yeah. 
how do the lawyers on the ground feel? Because I, I keep, look, let me say this, okay? The reason I am pursuing the lawyers is because it has a historic, it has a historic um, effect in our struggle. Because for the longest time, uh, people in the territory were not participating uh, in, in the struggle like they do now. Meaning that there was, there was a lot of activists outside the country in the diaspora, but they never really connected with the ground, okay? And those who connected, I can tell you, people in the, in the diaspora were, were not having a good time because they had to fund them. They had every single thing they did, it was money going down to get it done. And most of the time, those things were not done. And so when you're talking about people, the whole community or the whole other professionals joining the lawyers, in the United States, I read, I think it was the first communique that the lawyers sent out saying, giving some ultimatums to the, to the government that if you don't do this, we are going to declare, we, we're going to take you to international and, uh, for us and, and you explain how you're even controlling us. I read that and I was shocked. I made that statement in the press conference following the May 9th, 2015 um uh, inaugural conference of the common law lawyers yes and unfortunately I, I must say while i was having the press conference outside some of our folks i don't know how they came about it whether uh, they were being loyal to uh, some government agents or whatever they, they, they came up with this idea i gave six months and when i was giving six months it is because I had already put the bar, the, the powder in the barrel, ready to shoot when come six months. Mm -hmm. And they came up with this idea that, in fact, this is the statement that was made to me. We cannot be giving instructions to government like that. We, we, we need to be a little bit more polite. I said, polite? Where we are coming from? Anyway, I cannot, as an individual, impose my ideas. But reasonable time in court practice does not go beyond 60 days. So if you say reasonable time, mm -hmm. I can take that to be less than six months so we can go along. But of course I knew from the way they came was that they were proposing an elastic reasonable time. Yes. And it ran up to beyond a year. And just before I traveled for my vacation here, I lost it and I decided that's, that's before this last come yes the, that was in July yes okay I just lost my in July of 2015 no 2016 16, I'm sorry I just lost my patience with the feet dragging by my colleagues and I decided and the action that I had prepared before giving is say suggesting that we should give government six months I went and filed it in the Constitutional Council not because I expected to get anything out of the Constitutional Council. I wanted to demonstrate to the international fora that we had exhausted local remedies. Mm -hmm. And to this moment that we speak, despite my consistent lobbying and campaign, my colleagues have not endorsed that action. Well, you know, let me say this, uh, Barrister. Yes. Uh, you 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 live in a in a country which you just said yourself. It's a very hostile, extremely hostile, hostile government to the people of Southern Cameroon. Yes. They destroy their economy. They seize their assets, uh, and they've killed a lot just for going out to make to to protest. So I, it's not everybody who has your courage to do some of the things that you No, but do. you know where my comfort lies? The younger generation of lawyers who are the ones in the majority and I am I'm counting on them. Mm -hmm. They are not ready to take any half measure for what they ask. All right. Then. They are resolute that even if the strike has to go on for two years, they will not go to court. So there are only a few people, as we speak, those young, dynamic generation of lawyers, they are moving the stage that they should meet 
in Manfe for a long projected conference of the common law lawyers. Mm -hmm. And they want to go there and take major decisions. Okay. And what I'm saying is this. When I said my colleagues, I mean those with whom we're in leadership. Okay. In fact, I've even had information that after I left, some, some of the lawyers were criticizing me that had I not declared the creation of the common law bar, some of the lawyers who were arrested would never have been arrested. No, they've been arresting people left and right. Even but if, 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 what I'm saying is that mm -hmm. the teachers, mm -hmm. they did not declare an Anglo-Saxon teacher's association per se mm -hmm. because they have but trade unions under the law of Cameroon are they not arrested and detained no they are so we have hope because the people who have the energy the people who are dynamic they are not afraid that they have just a few years they are looking more into the future they know that their sacrifice today is an investment for a better tomorrow are the younger generation of lawyers and those are the people that I stand for okay uh, I was telling you my story about reading that piece and that and then I started following it the, yeah. and I and I followed it really 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 carefully mm -hmm. and 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 I was amazed I was amazed that the lawyers actually started following up what the, the pronouncements you, you, you talked about I can give you the, I can give you the reason for that yes you see the lawyer's action was not for self-interest. Lawyers, as we are private practitioners. We are not paid by government. Right? Mm -hmm. We are not magistrates who are paid by government. So it is like somebody deciding to go on fasting or hunger strike. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. we, we, the lawyers were making the pristine sacrifice. That is why the public, the Southern Cameroon public, could recognize and respect them. Secondly, the conceptual work was not lightly done. Beyond that, we had a trajectory that we were following meticulously. When we deposited our resolutions from the May 9th, 2015 conference, and we waited and nothing happened, we said, okay, the government departments that we had sent this thing, they don't want to act. The Minister of Justice and what have you, he was instead insulting us. We said, if it is a matter of force, we are going to show you that our defiance is not only legal, it is legitimate. We ignore you. He called us to a meeting. We damned him and we started writing direct to the head of state. And we told the head of state, if we don't have an answer, because we are proceeding on strike. If we don't have an answer from you within this time limit, we are going to make the strike indefinite. And that strike was made indefinite and it's continuing to this moment that we are speaking. All right. And the government said, we don't care. But they came around because we, we kept the force. I appeared between, before a number of TV stations. I think in Canal Do, I lost my temper mm -hmm. and i let out what was up to that time like a secret agenda mm -hmm. i told our audience and the participants in that program that look here <laughs> you have a rare opportunity for us to even enter into a, a discussion for reconstruction of a federal foundation and since you only continue to throw insult on our beckoning that we should go back to Fumban and correct things, you are going to have restoration of Southern Cameroon. Mm -hmm. The video is there on YouTube. Yes, I watched it. We made it very clear, and this continued to fire the people. And let me tell you something. Our people in government, from presidency down to the smallest district office, before I left, they were calling me and telling me that you people 
is God who has sent you. We are all behind you. Even if we don't come to the public and speak, we are behind you. There is not a single thousand Cameroonian who is not committed to this struggle. Even all those ministers you see there like this. Since they went in with the excitement of being appointed a prime minister and they saw that the slavery into which they have been put is worse than the ordinary Southern Cameroonian on the street. Yes. They are secretly in support of what is going on. Yes. Let me tell you. I have said the reconstruction of Southern Cameroon will involve a truth and reconciliation commission. And the confessions you will get there would involve when you are in a cage. <coughs> Excuse me. When you are in a cage like I was, what do you expect me to do? <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. So, I have said, those of us who have the opportunity outside, particularly those of us in the diaspora, since I have been out here, as I told you, I went to various cities holding town hall meetings, by some luck, some Southern Cameroonians in some academic institutions saw the need for us to talk outside our circle. Mm -hmm. And they invited me, for example, to University of Georgia at Athens, and I did a presentation there. We also had a panel discussion in which I participated with the Public Policy Institute in Washington, D.C. Went to some American state institutions. I don't want to mention them. Mm -hmm. And we were facilitated to have an appearance with VOA, mm -hmm. which was groundbreaking. And we also went to the famous John Hopkins University in the African Studies Spring Meeting Association mm -hmm. and made a presentation there. That's talking outside our circle. Yes, absolutely. This is one aspect of the strategic planning that we'll have some other time to discuss. Yes, absolutely. So, in essence, we need to be able to build a solid communication bridge between the people in the territory who are taking the crude fire from the government of the Republic of Cameroon. Yes. And the people in the diaspora who are bleeding psychologically because their loved ones are the ones who are being smashed. In fact, they are the kind of secondary victims of torture and trauma oh, in the territory, absolutely. which is very close and sometimes surpasses even the direct victim because the direct victim over a period has become immune to certain things yes. but the people here living in a land of freedom they feel the pinch so hard while the people feel the pulling of their flesh the people out in the diaspora feel the chopping off of their flesh yes but what i'm saying is that all these negativities produce such amount of energy that needs to be connected to propel the revolution. Because we need that communication to understand each other. And that is why I say that it is unfair for a small group of people to sit and claim for themselves. We are the only ones who can do this. We are the only ones who can do this. I know when I was invited to the Morris meeting at uh, Hagastown, I told them in non, no uncertain terms. I said, you have a beautiful idea, but you cannot climb a tree from the top. You must build from the grassroots. When you go to Skakuf, Skakuf attempted to cure the problem of 
Morris because Kakuf was subsequent to Morris. But there's, there, there, it, there was some double talk at the level of Skakuf because occasionally you find the same people operating Skakuf talking with the speaker of the consortium. When it is convenient, they talk with the speaker of Skakuf. Skakuf. Yes. That bipolarity is not the kind of thing we are looking for. Yeah. Um... And... Let me let me just conclude this. Okay. Skakuf would say that we brought all the existing organizations together. So if I had created my own organization and went there, like many other people who who could have organizations in their briefcase which has not got up to five or three members skaku would nominally say that we have 10 organizations what is the weight of each of those organizations as far as the population spread per county in southern cameroons no just as far as membership you don't even have yes, to go to even the spread. membership yes no but i'm saying the representativity yes. is important yes. so we need as I had put out, when I went through the town hall meetings, I said, the United States is a well of resources, both human and material. And to be able to tap from that source, it has absolutely to be organized. Yes, absolutely. And I said, the communities, in all the major cities that had high concentration of Southern Cameroonians needed, needed to come together. And within the states, they needed to have a network. Mm -hmm. And the networks from the various states had to come together and form a supranational network for the United States. Canada would do the same. European Union, Britain after it exited, China that are addressed, when they had their conference, mm -hmm. then the people in Africa ought to organize themselves. They could split into West Africa, Central Africa, East Africa, and Southern Africa. It is this kind of spatial reorganization that we need. Granted, a revolution is not generally led by a democratically elected leader. No. But we have a special mm -hmm. kind of situation where whether we like it or not, we must come out with a cocktail of a strong leader who emerges but has support for the consensus across the board. Okay. And whether the leadership or the strategy or whatever, it has to be anchored on a solid foundation. And I use this imagery. You cannot build a skyscraper on a mud brick foundation. You must drill to the hardest part of the earth, to steel it. pillars mm -hmm. upon which to build your skyscraper, skyscrapers. Okay. Um, here's what I'm going to say, okay? Um, um, I'm, you know, you've mentioned a lot of organizations, you've, you've, you've mentioned a lot of uh, processes that took place since, since the ground swell. swell. Support and, to the action of the lawyers. Yes. I, 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 know, I, know, I know one thing you, you, you are asking for. Yes. I, I have made the point that whoever, whoever let, let is me, catching up must not forget that. Let, let me... The, Hold your hold your thought there. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm and I'm going to say this from a personal point of view. Okay, okay? you're welcome. Um, l l like you already say, that revolutions are not because when you're in a struggle or in a game. Let, let's even put a game. When you're in a game, right? When you're playing a, a, a match, a soccer match or a basketball game, what you do is you you pass your ball. 
to to the best scorer that Corner. day. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so and so it is. It is in that in that arena that you and that you determine by performance who is the person you're gonna send the ball to to send into the net. Yes, you have to have your um your Michael Jordan. You have to have your what was this guy in um, in Cleveland now? Uh, uh, Le LeBron James. You have to have your LeBron James. I said for us to win this game, that's the person. So the reason I've been questioning you on the lawyers was because like I told you we've had the experience of working with a lot of people on the ground different factions and they were never delivering I tell you they were not delivering on two levels one they were I don't want to use the word beggarly because like the public intentionally impoverish our people so that our people cannot help themselves on the ground and therefore people cannot move from point one to point two without without help I agree. and so some of the people we partner with on the ground were very difficult to work with because of what La Republic has done to our people. And so when the lawyers came, we had a rare opportunity because we had very educated people uh, who are also educated in the law who are, uh, and who, who were financially independent. And who, I'm going to tell you one thing, and you, you probably don't, don't know that this was very important, who, had, who also went online and said they didn't want any money from the diaspora. When yes. I said that. Yes, they didn't want any money. I said that. Yes. I remember I remember a CEO from England offered to send us money and I told him we don't need the money. Yes. In fact, Mark Barra started a GoFundMe and I called it call him to shut it down. Yes, please. Let because me... I said money was going to kill this revolution. Now this is let me let me let me finish my little story here. I like the interjections because because yes. you're throwing a little more right. clear uh, you 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 throw more, more clarity. Yes. So when the lawyers came, I knew. <laughs> I knew that we have real, a rare opportunities with partners on the ground who are going to deliver to us in a way that it's never been delivered before. And so when you came to the United States, I, I just knew that we have our leader made from the ground, okay? But somehow, uh, you, you did some of what you've already mentioned, you did a round, but you, but, but I did not see, I should say you, because you came as somebody who was chased and you came with with you came with you, you came with the shirt on your back and so what i expected was us to bring you in and and give you the support and and and, and ask you to continue what you've been doing on the ground because you've proven having said that i'm going to read a text to you that i wrote because of of what i look let me say this okay maurice came out with the idea of a prime minister i shut it down big time because like you said, Morris was trying to build from the top down. I've never heard of Morris and suddenly a ground swell comes and I see people posturing. And, I, and, I, and, and I'm not going to minimize this because I told Morris, I wrote it very clearly, that they do not belong in this struggle. We haven't heard of them. We already know people have been performing for us on the ground. Please let those who are performing for us continue. There were other groups that were going around posturing, okay? Then I heard about a prime minister to be elected, and I said, this is not time, to, let's look for our LeBron Jameses and pass them the ball to, to, to make us win this thing. And so, I heard recently that, uh, that there were conclaves coming. And so, this is what I did. I went to our forum, and I posted this, this, uh, this, <laughs> this text. I'm going to read it to you, okay? Okay. I said, I have never believed in the appointment or quote-unquote election of anyone to lead us to restore our independence. We will know our leaders to lead us to independence restoration by their work, their bravery, their courage, and their leadership in the trenches, and not by some election in a conclave or some other smoke-filled room like that. I don't want to be introduced to who will lead me to our independence restoration. I want, I want to know him or her by his work in the struggle, public work in the struggle, over time, nothing else, nothing less. I believe in the ANC model. That's what I wrote. I did not hear, then I didn't know of anyone to be appointed, okay? 
a few days later, when I wrote that, somebody came and posted another thing and, and told me how oh, they've appointed uh, or oh, they've elected uh, 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 Tabe, uh, Julius, Julius Ayuk Tabe. Am yes. I, are the names in, in the crowd, right? Yeah. Okay. And so, and so, and, and, and this in response to what I wrote. And he said, uh, get to know the PM of, of, of Southern Cameroon. He has been hired, he, no, he has been behind this fight from, a very, from the very beginning. He is wanted by La Republic for quote unquote sponsoring terrorism and secessionist groups. He almost single handedly paid satellite bills for SCBC and, and took care of flight and lodging for delegations to South, to South Africa. I'm not going to finish it, but you can get where I'm going with this. So just what I said was happening. I was being introduced to my leader. They were telling me what he's done. And, and, and I'm not blaming anybody, okay? The process, the process, the process, where in the middle of this NBA finals, <coughs> right, we are sitting down and electing who would be our point guard doesn't look right to me. And I cannot have you leave this interview without <laughs> clarifying for me, clarifying for me yeah. why this should be happening. Is it because the lawyers who has, you know, I wanted to bring us, but I don't want to interrupt this, this question. Clarify for me, is it because the lawyers and the teachers or what you or what was called the consortium did not deliver that a vacuum was being filled? Oh, I mean, because because I, I like I say it's not about anybody, but it's about the process. And I think that the one thing that has killed the Southern Cameroon time and time again has been poor leadership. And I see that happening again from the process because if the process is not right, the outcome of that process will not be right either. Let me say this uh, in response to your question. Um, one of the battles that I've had within me is that there is a difference between A commitment to directing the revolution mm -hmm. and the taking of the glory of leadership. You asked me that I came in from Cameroon with so much baggage mm -hmm. and that explains why everybody wanted to see me. But I tell you something. It was not so much Harmony Bogdan Bhutan, myself. It was more the lawyers and the role they had played in reigniting our assertion of our independent statehood so forthrightly, so clearly, that people responded to it as if you had placed an electromagnetic device in the center of Southern Cameroon, and all Southern Cameroonians were pieces of iron filings that were rushing to that magnet. magnet. Yes. That's what the lawyers did. But guess what happened? People quickly went with their finances. We used our credibility. People went with their cash and when they raised money, they took advantage of the initial success of the Cameroon government dispersing the leadership of the lawyers and the consortium by throwing bets. Okay, 
If you recognize me as your representative in North America, no, I will give you money. And people started funding people both in the territory and nearby Nigeria. Privately? Yes. Or publicly? Not publicly, because mm. the only thing I know, which I did, was that when I came to Minnesota here, I told you people, when you had invited me, I said, my family and friends are able to provide me accommodation and feeding in Maryland. It is not as if I don't need money. But there are people out there in Nigeria who are virtually stranded. And I pleaded with you that there were some in Abuja who were about to be kicked out of their hotels. Spontaneously, you guys said you were going to put together at least $500 for me to send it to them. And that money came out right where we were sitting. Mm -hmm. You wanted to hand the money to me, I said, no, I'm not interested. I don't want tomorrow to be quoted that I touched any money. Mm -hmm. Your group should wait. I will give you the contact address of the addressees to whom we are sending this money. And when I called them, because none of them had the ID that they could go and collect the money, they gave me the ID of a staff of the hotel. And I think, as one of you told me after, so you were touched that you said you didn't want to have anything to do with money. So we told other people that this was a rare occurrence. The people were not in the meeting. Mm -hmm. And they were able to add $300 and it came up to $800. Mm -hmm. Which you people sent to the address that I sent to you by text. That money, when you, 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 you send by WhatsApp attachment, the receipt, I forwarded it and the money was well received and dispensed according to how they chose because i told them look around you any of our people who is around and suffering help any little bread you have break it let somebody has a have a piece i did not take a dollar from that 800 dollars transparent deal but we heard People in Houston said they were supporting these ones in Nigeria. People in Atlanta were supporting this. People in Maryland were supporting this. Transportation was paid for people to fly around, right? And uh, I just shook my head. If you come to a place as a stranger, you don't jump into their game. But unfortunately for me, the popularity, given the baggage I came with, thanks to the collaboration with my colleagues, the no, lawyers. And the work you've done, and I think that's more why people wanted to hear from you, because they've seen what No, but let me, just, let me just clear this. Yes. These people who are now buying connection with the people with whom we had worked, Leaving aside, especially the lawyers within the territory who were holding the fort. They ended up coming up with schemes to the extent that some of them threatened to do away with my life here. It was not funny mm. that I would run away from being assassinated by Bia's agent to come here and be exposed to the risk of assassination by supposedly Southern Cameroonians. Mm. You can see that any rational human being would take a step back. Let me understand where I am before continuing with what is a lifelong engagement 
because the struggle for the restoration of Southern Cameroon, I, I got involved as the, 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 the founding president of National Union of Cameroon Students, Calabar University branch in 1981. So I did not enter in, nine, uh, in 2015. And Mfonfo is there to testify. Pandangam is there to, to testify. I've been their pro bono counsel within Cameroon to Abuja right up to the African Commission where in most instances we left Bamenda by road and went to Ghana or Nigeria. This I am not complaining because I did it with all joy fighting for my own personal identity and the future identity of my children, yes. which is their birthright that I owe them. And by extension, as an emerging elder from Southern Cameroon, I owe it to every Southern Cameroonian generation after me. So it's not about being a leader, but God didn't make a mistake of delivering me the time, um, of letting me come into this world at the time that he did and into the particular part of the world with a particular history. There is a mission that I have to accomplish. And that mission is not about making money and, you know, amassing wealth like I could have done. It is about redefining our identity and asserting it. Yeah, but here, here's, look, I'm, 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 I think what I'm trying to say is that I, I worry about the outcome of the process. I don't have another analogy other than saying that when you're in the finals of the NBA, you put the ball in LeBron James's hands. I'm going to even take LeBron out. Let me finish, please. Yeah. I'm even going to take LeBron out. Put the ball in somebody else's hand who has a jersey I see in the field, who the crowd can see and the crowd knows. I am so sorry for this for the for for for, for the German man who was who, who this conclave came out with because they put him in a very difficult situation. He this is a man who I would I would have rather sit here and I'm celebrating than than, than having worries in my mind. I don't know how he will come out. Well I share, the, I, share I, I share the same worries with you because let me tell you, there was a Skakuf advisory council. Mm -hmm. And can you believe, for all the work that Professor Anyangwe has been doing, even with the recent action he took unilaterally for the, 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 the now two years detainees from WUM mm -hmm. in the African Commission. Yes, I read that report. Where he's breaking grounds with it. Yes, absolutely. It's a singular action. He has, I mean, it's an action he has taken alone. Yes. I remember I wanted to join, I wanted to join in that action within the country and I was told that some lawyers who, who are uh, from whom mm -hmm. were the paid counsel of those guys. Okay. So if if somebody already has paid counsel, you don't go there as a pro bono counsel because you are just nosing too much. Yes, yes. But Professor Anyangwe did all those things. And for several other matters, this Atlanta will be, I think, the third or fourth time that he is flying into the United States for this Southern Cameroon's issue. I had a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. And he told me that, oh, those guys, they didn't even put him in that advisory council. They put him there as an afterthought. So you can see something in the nature of gerrymandering. People, you know, positioning and shifting things because they are pursuing a particular interest, which is unfortunate. I say it is unfortunate. Yes, it and is. I'm agreeing with you about this process issue. Yes. Now, if the if I if I were to talk about the process, we are complaining about the deceptions in Fumban, the handing over 
of our sovereignty to uh, Ahijo instead of Foncha as obtaining by false pre pretenses a form of theft. How can Skakuf in one breath say they have established their executive council of Skakuf with the chairman of that executive council as Mr. Julius Ayuk and then they just flip over that uh, executive council to be the interim government of Southern Cameroon. What, what process was used yeah. for this transformation? This is the difficulty the gentleman could face. Absolutely. And in fact, from the text that you read, which I'm hearing for the first time. Mm -hmm. If somebody is saying that he had invested in taking care of those who are now refugees in Nigeria, he had sponsored this and that, he has invested his money. So is the struggle a commodity on sale? No. That people have to be comp compensated? No. Then we should have a political stock exchange where the price is quoted and then there will be shareholders. Yeah. You understand? Yes. yes. So, what, I, what I hope to do is this. Mm -hmm. I expect, because every Southern Cameroon has a right to lead this struggle. Mr. Ayo Julius yes. has that right. Yes. Okay. From his first speech, it shows that he likes it, he enjoys it, but he has homework. It's not for somebody to market him. He has to market himself. And the legitimization of leadership, as you have said, comes from your baggage. Not a recent construct. No, I, you know, I, again, I, I really don't want to... <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm saying it because the process is what we are focusing on. Yes. And so yes. I will yes. give the benefit of doubt to any individual. No, and we will pray that he succeeds. Yes. But we cannot afford The process, fail. you cannot, the process cannot be the one that you go and sit somewhere and say that you have an executive council of Skakuf or Morris and then you flip it over in a split second and say that is a southern Cameroon this thing? No. Yeah. I know that there is something. People have sampled that our people are thirsty for leadership. Yes. The thirst for leadership should not reduce us to a drowning person who is ready to hang on just any process. You, you know what, Barrister? No. For me, it's been being let me let me look there have been two lawyers that i celebrated and i'm going to tell you because i like i've already said on one of the programs my my involvement in the struggle started when i was very young when i was at the university of yaoundé right i went there and i got frustrated i started asking a lot of questions i haven't stopped asking those questions but the representatives who were talking on our behalf were mostly uneducated people yeah. and then mostly very needy people the first time, and I told Gojidinka this, the first time I heard Gojidinka come to my university in Minnesota and made a speech, and Dr. Asanga was with, with him and, and, and Pa Mokong, I, I told Gojidinka that for the first time I was really proud of who is standing and speaking on our behalf. Yeah. Because he spoke very clearly, uh, with a lot of confidence. Uh, you didn't need to... I, I don't want to sound derogatory to people who did not speak like him. No, he thought through his uh, message. Yes, but he was very good. And if, if you were sitting there, you'd be proud that that's your leader. Okay? And I think he's done his own, his own contribution to the struggle. In, okay? fairness, in fairness to uh, His Royal Highness Gojitinka, he recognizes that while his brain may still be very active, he does not maintain 
the same physical energy that he had 20 yeah. years plus ago and he has been beckoning i mean i was amused because most of the time when he calls me he said my tabo mbeki mm -hmm. that's some kind of my political successor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he uses the same language on uh, uh on professor Anyangwe as we discovered he is fishing for the people who resemble his courage and thoroughness. Yes, yes, yes. And and, and, and he's not build, he's not building that. He's not from what he explains. He's building that. Let me use a very uh, simplistic this thing. He's building that on the report card. Yes, that he has. Yes, absolutely. And what I was trying to say is that. Uh, so I was proud of him, and I'm not saying that I need to see people perform in the field for that long because no. if you look at people like uh, uh, Mancho Bibitsi. Yes. If you look at even Bala, I did not know Bala six, six months ago, but he came out. I saw him on the field. I checked sure. him out in the in the field of play. Yes. I heard him speak. Yes. I've known you uh, a while back, but I did not know you as I. In fact, I'm got involved. You, I've known you. I met you once, but then when I saw you on television I, and the way you spoke in the lion's den, so to speak, mm -hmm. and like that man, we need to support him. So there were people who recently came, but you saw them on the playing field. Let me say this. Even Barista Bala and uh, and uh, Barista Bala and uh, Fontem, mm -hmm. Dr. Fontem, mm -hmm. I could not have collaborated with them for that long without me being assured from the interaction absolutely that they were right absolutely they were all good material yes but in fact talk to anybody who is an who has left prison when you have the chains on your leg your language is reconditioned yes so i pray the public not to judge those our colleagues by what by the, they, by the prison language by the prison language okay because Mukon wrote his book prison graduate yes he couldn't have published that book in prison no he no. was a prison graduate prisoner without a prisoner crime. without a, a crime yes he only wrote it after he had left prison, prison yes yes Bo Herbert they only wrote Prison graduate, after they had left, when they were involved in this SDF thing, yes. only when they had left detention. Yes. So it's it's it's, it's a post rights deprivation analysis. Mm -hmm. Then you are in freedom, and you can you have recollected yourself, and you can write. Yes. But what I'm saying is that we have the misfortune that. Things happen so rapidly from the lawyer's action that people already saw in the horizon the elephant was lying down. They didn't know that the elephant was still alive. Everybody was looking for his knife to go and cut off his chunk. That's where you started seeing elbowing and positioning. But I want to assure you that from whatever angle we have any posturing it will fizzle out sooner than later yes um. and i can tell you that leadership are in many forms leadership may be the activism if you take the corporate world where you have been the president of a company is in leadership. The members of the board of directors are in leadership. The managers at every le uh, various levels are in leadership, isn't it? Yes. There is a certain leadership that is urgent, that has to be consistent. The leadership of the board of directors. Yes. These are the people who should own the process and direct it. That is a leadership that is yet to be established 
for this struggle. And and I and I, I would I would and in fact I can give you my commitment. Mm -hmm. This is my direction. I will not relent my effort in ensuring that while there is a lone executive leader somewhere, the alter ego of this struggle must be anchored in corporate style in the board of directors of this revolution. Um, I, 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 uh, I totally agree, but let me say this, okay? Yes. Uh, and and I, I'm, I, I wouldn't say very much about that. That's all right. Um, it's been a very long struggle. Our people have paid dearly, dearly. Disproportionately high. Yes. We have absolutely no support. We are doing it on our own. People have lost... Uh, life and property. People have lost a lot of life. People are now working. And, 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 and we shouldn't be very easy in making certain decisions. Yep. And I worry. I worry that if, if we keep doing this, because the people of Southern Cameroon are very brave people. And they have always been failed by leadership. And some people are choosing not to talk about this. They're just sitting quiet. And because we lack leadership so much, uh, some people would like to support it. I would like to support it too. But, but the, the voice of your experience and your education shouldn't keep you quiet from from saying what you think, because this process is going to be built by all of us. We've always allowed our issues to be handled by a few people and they screwed it up for us. And so... Uh, no, you, you can be assured, I'm not going to do that. That is why I'm reconnecting very forcefully with the vibrant 80% of Southern Cameroon lawyers back in the territory. And the idea is that they provided the heartbeat of the revolution. Yes. And they have to regain it and supply that corporate leadership that I am talking about. I, I would be very... Because look at the, Amer the American Congress is made of what? Lawyers. Yes. Lawyers. It has never failed any country. In England, it's lawyers. In France, it's lawyers. The lawyers have to get their hands back on the plow. I don't think they've ever taken because I don't hear. I don't hear. No, I, no, no, no. I know some of them are faltering because I like. Let me tell you, there's yeah, been. Is, is, is there, this Sama who? No, no, forget about that. Oh, okay. That's part of that's 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 part of SDF prostitution. Okay. Yes, that's part of SDF prostitution. I am telling you. I'm not talking. I'm talking of lawyers who are still paying rents for their houses, their residence. And their offices. Age is on their side. And they are determined to take decisions of what is happening today because the future is theirs. Thank you. Uh, and they have my backing. Yes. Um, Barisa, I'll, I'll, I'll end it on that high note. I, I wanted to discuss a lot of things with you, but I, I, I just realized that in one show it will not work so i will see if i can organize more shows before you even leave town because okay. because our people need to hear from from those people who have brought us to where we are now let me just close with one word yes um i i want to say that and and this is to all southern cameroonians we should know that even if our population were to be 10 million. The resources in Southern Cameroon is capable of sustaining a population of 100 million for the next 50 years. We should not be in a hurry to put ourselves in positions of popularity or enrichment. We should be more concerned about laying a solid foundation for a sustainable state that will not have any reason to regret. One of the things I have been preaching in private is that the foundation should be so rock solid 
that we prevent what is happening in La Republic having a compromised independence. We should also avoid the situation in South Sudan because we must have this consensus and arrive the end point with unison. Otherwise, we will arrive in dispersed ranks and to secure a united front is not by mischievously co-opting people. It is by securing the consent of people across the board. That is why I use this opportunity to condemn the hacking down of people's names, the lies that I use to bring people down. I saw in one Facebook post a lady saying that Bohaber and his team have been given 30 billion in Gabon to frustrate the executive governing council of Skakuf. I challenge anybody who has proof of any such thing to put it on table for us to verify. I also say that Skakuf should prevent itself from getting arrogant. They should reach out in a more constructive manner to build people. I know and I've been talking to people who are in Nigeria who are excluded from the discussions in Skakuf from the beginning till today who when we're back home were frontliners. It is most unfortunate. Then to our church leaders. I don't know whether they forget the persecution that Christ and his disciples had in their lifetime. And if they feel they cannot take the heat of leading the church, they can step down. The Catholic Church must not confuse its spread over the territory of Southern Cameroon and the Republic of Cameroon to be a basis to force a unity which has never existed, does not exist, and will never exist. The Presbyterian Church should not reduce itself to off licenses where you need to have many outlets so that you can get more customers. The Presbyterian Church is originally the PCC in Southern Cameroon. That's why the headquarters is in Boya. The other churches, we are saying all the people who look up to Christ must come together and pray. Because this Republic of Cameroon has not only been operating with France and Britain, but they have been the establishment in Cameroon has been manned by occultists and they have used occultism from Yaoundé to Champs-Élysées over to England to subjugate us. What you church leaders must do is to mobilize the Christians to use prayer to disempower the occultist and clear the path to cross our own red sea.